I, the, he was my only grandfather. I didn't have any other uh, grandfather, so I, I didn't know what to compare, but it wasn't that the grandfather would take me to the, <laughs> to the, to the yard or play with me or uh, no, no. I, I never called him even grandpa, I called him Abrashe. <laughs> then it was, we were going to Abrashe and Safta Frida and Grandma Frida. And, and the only way really for me to connect with him is to be um, very polite and, and, and talk to him as a grown up. And so I found this way of interviewing him every time that I came, so we had lunch, and then afterwards I'm interviewing him. So I was gathering stories. This was the only way really to uh, to make uh, a close relationship with him. So I was growing up with this whole stories of, of, of uh, always good ending stories, but stories from the past I was curious about that time and 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 like like the story I told you in the, in with the German soldier it was always stories that give you strength to live not take from you stories with good ending but it was stories from from the war and I was a little kid and and every time I went to Europe I I had to go to these antique shops and ask for if they have items from from the war because I had to make the story's reality somehow. It was it was story, but I had to make them physical for me. So I went to this shop, shop in Czechoslovakia, in, in, Prague, in Prague, and and I asked the the guy who worked there if they, he had maybe items from the war, and he said, he was, you know, he looked at me really in shock for a minute, and then he said, Yes, I will show you. And he went to the attic, and it was many, many years ago. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, common to talk about those things in Europe and and to sell things. And he went down, and he had on his hand a yellow straw. And it was the first time that I ever seen a yellow straw. You know, the yellow straw is attached. And I said to him. Is it for sale? And he said, yes, it costs $200. And I didn't buy it. And I went back home, and I, I, and I, I went to Abrashe, and I said, Abrashe, you're not going to believe this story. I've just seen this yellow star in this antique shop in Czechoslovakia, and this guy wanted $200 for it, but I didn't buy it. And you know, he looks at me very calmly, looks at this shaking girl, and with this little smile, he said, $200? That's very interesting, because I got it for free. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like to tell this story because you would see that even though it's it's a very um, difficult history and stories and, and tragedies for Sutskaba, of course, and for, uh, for the Jewish people. Never, never it was, and even in, in his poems, you would not see death, sadness, blood, Nazi. Always stories that give you, that bring a smile, that gives you hope, give you strength to live. Like he said, our part as <coughs> artists is to bring healing beauty to the world in order, to, in order for us to give the one that reads it strength to live. So also in his story, um, he has a he has a poem that says, "Oh, hit this stone, shaish mi How are you? 
Marble. 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 He said black mar marble. 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 In B. In B. Marble. Hit it. Hit it until a smile appeared. So it's dark and it's marble, it's very heavy, but you will hit it until the smile appears. So this was my part, and now I, I, I would be happy if you have any questions um, about the film and about, so also now you understand uh, the, the, why I had to do first the, the film to the Israelis, <laughs> cause we, to the Israeli society and, um, and now everybody understand how come that Sutzkever is known to some part of the world more than the place that he lived in most of his life, which is Israel. Yes. yes. Had, uh, 